Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got the OKC Carter Prime in front of us. This is my personal knife. Uh, just to show you, I went ahead and did some uh, anodizing on the handles. Titanium handles. As well, I did some uh, light uh, dimpling and jeweling on the back spacer and the pocket clip. So just kind of get that out of the way. So it does look a little bit different from a stock knife. And I also distressed the uh, pivot hardware a little bit, just to kind of give it a, a worn, faded appearance. Other than that, other than that the knife's uh, you know 100% stock. Just kind of changed the aesthetics to make it my own. So let's go ahead and jump into the knife. This uh, knife was designed by Robert Carter. He's a grandson and son of Mel and Joe Pardue. So there's obviously some knife lineage there as far as designs go. I'm sure you've heard their names even own some of their uh, works or collaborations. So real excited to see uh, what uh, Robert Carter can do in the knife world. Really looking forward to seeing some of his custom work as well as uh, hopefully many more collaborations. Um, I'm sure you've seen maybe the CRKT Jettison 6120 or 6130 models. Those are also designed by Robert Carter. But let's go ahead and jump into this knife. Uh, eight inch overall length. You're looking at a blade length of 3.375 inches, blade thickness of uh, 0.15 of an inch. The handle width comes in at just a hair over half an inch. The weight comes in at 5.2 ounces. You're looking at uh, D2 blade steel in this sheep's foot with a hollow ground. And it is titanium handles as well as a titanium milled pocket clip. I mean, this knife sells for right around the $80 price range, and I've spent, you know, $30, $40 on titanium clips for some of my zero-tolerance knives, so it's pretty cool that you could get a knife in that price range, you know, not only with titanium, but with the titanium pocket clip as well. So, some of the things that people noticed right away about this knife that maybe they didn't like was it does have a, a unique shape to it. And even though it's only a half inch thick, which in my opinion isn't terribly thick, it's a little bit on the wide side, but not crazy thick, a lot of people seem to just uh, get hung up on that. And I think it's because it looks wider than it is. But I went ahead and mic'd it, and it is just over half an inch thick. So that's really not a huge deal for me. And coming in at 5.2 ounces, there's a lot of knives that I carry that are in that, white range, that uh, weight range or more. So that's not a huge issue to me. I can see where if you're someone that wears baggier clothing or something like that, that getting a knife that weighs five, six ounces, you know, might be too heavy to you. Obviously, if you're used to carrying like a Spyderco Delica or um, uh, let's say, I don't know, a CRKT Eros, Titanium Eros or something, you know, that weighs two, three ounces or less, then yeah, six ounces, you're definitely going to feel that. Uh, but this one coming in at 5.2, you know, for me, I wear blue jeans, I wear a belt, that's not an issue for me. So not an issue for me is the thickness and the weight. The sheep's foot style blade, that's obviously something that some people either are going to like or not like. It's not a piercing blade, it's more of a utility shape blade. So for me, working in the shop where I build custom bikes, opening packages all day long and stuff like that, uh, that type of blade shape really lends nicely to opening cardboard boxes, tape, um, packaging materials, and things like that. So I had no issue with it. I was able to pierce through one clamshell pack by, you know, holding it at slightly an awkward angle, piercing the packaging, and then, you know, slicing down and through. So I really didn't run into any issues with that type of uh, blade shape. So just keep that in mind, though, if you're, you know, what you're planning on using it for. Um, as far as uh, the pivot system is a is a bearings and it's similar to an IKBS uh, I had it apart a few times the knife I'll say isn't the funnest to take apart and put back together but it's not so bad it's just regular Torx hardware uh, I want to say this is a T8 and these were a T5 I believe so not a problem taking it apart I like to use a small flat head um, from an eyewear kit when I'm removing the IKBS bearings and then when I'm reinstalling them I just keep a little bit of light oil on the end of that uh, flathead and I'm able to place each ball at a time so not a huge issue but it is a little bit more time consuming compared to having something with caged bearings uh, the action on the knife is just is just awesome pretty much free drop 
you can go ahead and light switch it you can go ahead and preload it and it just flies out of there so the axe on the knife at the price point that you can find these for which if i didn't mention before is right around 80 dollars is unbelievable i mean it's right up there with knives that are easily double its price range so if we want to go ahead and get into size comparisons a little bit here's a spider coast tenacious just to kind of give you a rough idea i think a lot of people either have had a tenacious or seen a tenacious you know so give me an idea of the overall length here's something that's a little bit more similar uh it's the wii knife 606 obviously a much you know more expensive knife more refined but as far as being that uh narrow height you know roughly you know somewhere around three and a half inch blade length you know it's it's very similar in shape and and stuff so now if you want to talk about price uh a similar knife in price range would be this kaiser roach and the Kaiser Roach sells for, I believe, $80, $85 on Blade HQ. And like I said, this is, I think, $80 on Blade HQ. So keep in mind, uh, a lot of people that, you know, are saying they don't like this knife, I have a hard time understanding that because if you bought this for $85, which is liner lock, VG10 uh, blade steel, G10 handles and bearings, you know, and you, you took it out and you played with it and you flipped it, and you go, yeah, yeah, I can see how that's worth 85 bucks. So then why is it so hard to believe that something that has titanium, D2, bearings, and it's a frame lock is not worth $80? Because I've heard quite a few people say that they disliked it that much that they didn't feel it was worth it. Sure, it's a little bit clunky, a little bit blocky, has a couple of hot spots. You know, there's a little bit of a point on the end here, so when you're flipping it open, it kind of digs into your palm. Pocket clip creates a little bit of a hot spot. But honestly, those were things that right out of the box that I thought, wow, I'm not going to like this because it digs into my hand. But after giving it a couple weeks and carrying it, those small things all but disappeared for me. I do not notice that it has, you know, any sharp corners anymore, that the pocket clip dig digs into my palm. Some of that may just be getting used to something, um, but also it might be... Some people going overboard in the beginning just looking at the specs, like the weight, or initially putting it in your hand. I really think you have to carry something and use something, whether it's a knife, you know, whatever kind of tool or anything that it is that you're going to carry on a regular basis. You have to use it to see if it's really something that's going to work for you. And honestly, for 80 bucks on this knife, you know, with bearings, titanium, the D2, the action that it has, the solid lockup, I mean, absolutely solid lockup, then... For me, it's a it's a great buy at that price point. It's a great buy if you want to get into customizing. Maybe you want to try your hand at anodizing or jeweling. Maybe you want to get your you know get your hands on uh, something that you can uh, reshape reshape the blade profile and stuff. This would be you know good lending to that. Obviously, I dislike the uh, huge font on it. I think as many of the other reviewers and people I've seen on some of the groups and forums I belong to. Uh, it doesn't need to be that big but it's also something that again initially i was like oh man it looks cheesy i don't like it but now i'm just kind of used to it so not a big deal and if i wanted to i could go ahead and you know sand that off and then go ahead and etch the blade or restone wash it in a tumbler or something it did come very sharp we'll hit on that i know some people said theirs didn't come sharp mine came very sharp there was a little bit of fold over on the last like quarter inch of the blade which I don't know, which I haven't fixed yet. It's still a stock edge. But it just, that's just the grind on the blade. I've seen a couple of these knives, and I'll have to say that that is one point that they're definitely inconsistent on. I've seen some of these that have a, you know, a recurve on the bottom here and stuff. And, you know, mine's fairly straight, but I've seen some that have had it. So, you know, overall quality of the knife, you know, no, it's not perfect. But at that price range, you know, I'm almost torn because you say, well, what do you expect for that price point? Yeah, you could, you know, you can make an argument to say you expect a little bit more, or you can make an argument to say that at that price point, the materials that I'm getting, that it's okay, I'm willing to sacrifice those small things. And for me, that's the side that I lean towards. So, yeah, hit on it real quick again. You know, the width coming in at a half inch, to me, it's not too bad. 
uh, the hot spots that I initially felt all but disappeared maybe after just a couple of days of carrying it. The D2 steel obviously has a, a you know good edge retention. I don't think you're going to have to worry about rusting or anything because they've got this cool uh, DLC like coating that they've went ahead and stonewashed. So it gives this awesome look and, and I'm sure it's a nice protective finish on that D2 as well. You're definitely going to have to maintenance your bearings. Um, that's something that uh, I think any you know daily carrier of a knife with uh, bearings already probably uh, thinks about when they're making a purchase. Being as this is a loose bearing system and it is fairly open, I mean you're going to get some debris and stuff down in there. So that's something you're going to have to take into consideration. But other than that, man, I really can't speak highly enough about the knife. I don't really think there's any reason to not recommend one. Yeah, it's a little bit big, like I said, or things like that. You might find some things that you don't like as much, uh, maybe as I did, or it bugs you more. But uh, still, for the price point, I'd say go ahead, get it. Because even if you end up not liking it, there's going to be somebody that also is just like you that wants to try one. So you'll be able to resell it on the open market fairly quick. And uh, But for me, I'm keeping mine. I like it. I carry it pretty much every day. So that's the OKC Carter Prime. All right, guys, thanks, and take care.